so hello friends in this video we are going to discuss about uh, the procedures and also like how we can solve the governing equation of the motion using this uh, so solution of ordinary differential equation so we have previously discussed about the methodology that is required in order to come up with the governing equations using the force balance and the moment balance and in subsequent lectures we will also discuss about the lagrange methods or energy methods now let's start with now if we see the general governing equation of a motion for vibratory system it consists of three terms the first one is your inertial terms second is your dissipated uh, energy term third is your potential energy term and fourth is uh, fourth, this fourth term is your external excitation term now if we go back to our basic uh, differential equation uh, knowledge and uh, just try to summarize like how much initial conditions the number of initial condition that will be required in order to solve this uh, ordinary differential equation so can you please pause and uh, just think that uh, what are the number of initial conditions that will be required in order to solve this differential equation so the total number of uh, initial condition that will be required or uh, necessary to solve this equation will be 2 now uh, if we again look where if we try to derive the governing equation uh, for free vibration so for that what we have to do is that we have to drop down the term that is on the right hand side the force term excitation force term so then the equation becomes simply mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx equal to zero now uh, if we remember like uh, the definition of our natural frequency and the damping factor the two terms that we defined previously in our uh, last uh, videos so uh, the definition for omega natural frequency omega n and the damping factor are as follows so you can see that omega is defined as square root of k by m uh, at the same time the damping factor is defined by c by 2m omega n. now uh, the second thing is that what we are going to do is that we are going to convert this equation in a form which will be suitable for us in order to analyze these equations easily so for that what if we substitute these values of omega k by m and damping factor c by 2m omega n so the equation will be transformed as follows so the equation will be x double dot plus 2 zeta omega n x dot plus omega square x is equal to 0 i will really encourage you to do this transformation so that you will get familiar that how we come up with the final equation in the form of which which is directly dependent upon your two parameters natural frequency and the damping factor now if you still face any problem so just uh, whatever the problem that you are facing in the comment section and uh, we will try to resolve your query or even in the case if it is necessary then uh, we will uh, create one video that, uh, that will be dedicated to this conversion now uh, the thing is that if we look closely at this equation so can you please tell me like uh, this equation is homogeneous or non-homogeneous so the equation that is present here is homogeneous in nature so in order to solve this to summarize the things in order to solve these equations the total number of initial condition that will be required will be 2 and at the same time if this equation is also called as second order linear homogenized equation i am calling it as a linear at this time because the mass your damping coefficient and the stiffness are constant value if they are dependent upon each other then that equation will become non-linear in nature so let's start to solve this equation so in order to solve this equation first what we have to do is that we have to assume a solution so let's uh, assume this solution x is equal to a e to the power lambda t so the first question that should come in our mind is that why i have directly assumed the solution as a in this form so uh, if we look back to all of the vibratory system of single degree of freedom system so based upon your physical observation all the systems are harmonic in nature and this is the solution that will be required in order to uh, solve any uh, uh, ordinary differential equation which are harmonic in nature 
so uh, in order uh, in order to understand these things you can go through any basic textbook on which covers the differential equation ordinary differential equation of second order or first order so that will give you a better insight about this phenomena now the second thing is that if we am if i am going to differentiate this equation in order to come up with these terms x dot and x double dot this equation becomes a e to the power lambda t and this is x double dot a lambda square e to the power lambda t now what we have to do is that we have to substitute these things back into this equation this equation so let's call it one equation number 1 so if we substitute it back into this equation what we are going to get is here it will be a lambda square e to the power lambda t sorry plus 2 zeta now i am going to call it as uh, omega n so that uh, n this suffix will directly represent your natural frequency and this will become a e to the power lambda t into lambda plus this will be omega n square and this term will become a to the power p lambda t now in all of these terms first second and third the term a e to the power lambda t is common so we will take that out and this will become lambda square plus 2 zeta omega n plus omega n square equal to 0 now looking at this equation what it says is that the multiplication of these two terms should give us a zero value but this term a is a constant at e to the power lambda t cannot be equal to zero so there is only possible solution for this is that when your lambda square plus 2 zeta omega n plus omega n square equal to zero now this equation is a simple quadratic equation so there will be two roots or two solution for this equation that will be your lambda 1 and lambda 2 now now if you try to find the values of this roots or the solution lambda 1 and lambda 2 so that will be like suppose if we have any uh, just uh, revise the quadratic equation solution so if we have ax square plus bx plus c equal to 0 then our solution is something like x is equal to minus b by 2 plus minus root under b square minus 4 ac so now if we compare it to our equation that is lambda square plus 2 zeta omega n lambda plus omega n square equal to 0 so what we are going to get is that there will be two roots so let's denote it as lambda 1 and 2 and it will become minus zeta omega n plus minus omega n root under zeta square minus 1 so this is the these are the two solutions lambda 1 and lambda 2 for that equation now uh, if we go back to our basics of ordinary differential equation so for if second order harmonic equation uh, homogeneous uh, od have two uh, solutions lambda 1 and lambda 2 so we can always write that solution in form of like if we have two solutions gx and hx so we can always write those solutions as c1 into gx plus c2 into hx now uh, if we write this uh, solution for this case so it will become our c1 into the first solution will be your x1 suppose this is our first solution x1 then it will become a e to the power lambda 1t and second solution will become a into e to the power lambda 2t so let's write those equations e lambda 1t plus c2 a e lambda 2t now as c1 is already uh, itself a constant a is also a constant value so we can directly write it as like c1 dash e lambda 1t and this will become c2 dash a e lambda 2t so this will be our final solution for this equation now if we substitute the value of this lambda 1 and lambda 2 in the equation so we already know that lambda 1 will be equal to minus zeta omega n plus omega n root under zeta square minus 1 and lambda 2 will become minus zeta omega n plus minus omega n square root 
zeta square minus 1. So if we write the final expression for this, so that will become your final solution of this homogeneous uh, second order differential equation. So it will be like uh, exponential minus zeta omega nt and this will become your c1 dash exponential and this will become your square root of zeta square minus 1 into omega nt plus c2 dash square root of zeta square minus 1 omega n t so this will become this will be a final solution so how it comes like suppose if we have e to the power lambda 1t because all the other things are constant so it will become what what was the value of the lambda 1 so lambda 1 was minus zeta omega n plus square root of zeta square minus 1 omega n so it will be minus zeta omega n plus square root of zeta square minus 1 omega n so we can also write it as e to the power exponential to the power zeta omega n into exponential to the power zeta square minus 1 into omega n now for lambda 1 and lambda 2 this term will become same exponential to the power minus zeta omega n. so we can directly take it out outside so there will be time term also because it is lambda 1 into t and the other term will be c1 dash exponential to the power square root zeta square minus omega n and this term will be c2 dash square root zeta square minus 1 omega n t. So that's all for this video. In next video we will cover like how we can derive the equations for over damped, under damped and critically damped system and also by changing the value of the damping factors and other parameters we will see that how the response gets affected. So that's all for this video. If you like the video, please subscribe the channel and also don't forget to like the uh, video and you can always share it with your friends because it's free. Thank you.